let's look again at radiometric dating. One of the more obvious questions that people ask once they know a little about this is, why are different radioactive dating methods only useful for specific intervals? Now this is because radiometric dating is not an hourglass. Let me clarify. In an hourglass, the sand runs through the hourglass at a constant rate, and in a certain amount of time there is simply no more sand left. Not so with radioactive decay. Unstable atoms decay at predictable exponential rates. The more atoms there are in a collection, the higher the statistical probability that one will decay. Thus, when there are more atoms, more atoms will decay. Now, to have a useful measurement of this, scientists operate with the term half-life. Now, no laughing, we're not going to the Black Mesa Research Facility just yet. Seriously, though, half-life is the time it takes for half of the atoms in a given collection to decay. This is not dependent on the size of the sample, so it's a useful measurement. Now, half-lives vary quite wildly between different atoms, or rather, between different isotopes. For some, such as carbon-14, the half-life is so short that we quickly reach a point where there are so few of these isotopes left that statistical work on the numbers of isotopes remaining becomes useless. There are simply too few carbon-14 atoms left to reach any meaningful dating. But carbon-14 is extremely useful for short time spans, in geological terms that is, up to about 20 or 30,000 years. On the other hand, some isotopes, such as uranium-238, have an immense half-life in human terms, about 4.46 billion years. Now this means that by now almost exactly half of all uranium-238 on the planet has decayed into lead, obviously leaking radioactive particles like crazy along the way. This means that such isotopes are useless over geologically short periods of time, as there is simply too little decay to make any meaningful projection at all. But at the same time, this means that they are very useful for measuring longer time spans. So which element is useful for dating is determined by which age group you estimate the object to be dated is in. So how do we avoid using the wrong ones? Well, what we actually do is we use several different elements in the same sample and count the number of atoms of the original and the one it decays into, taking into account that some particles of the element that the original decays into may have already been present. If we can come up with similar dates on all of the elements that are useful within a certain time frame, we can be pretty sure that we've found the actual age of the object in question. Thus, for instance, we know that the oldest parts of the Earth's crust is about 4.5 billion years old. 